Hey guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today, I'm going to be getting into my November wrap up, telling you all about the 17 books that I read during the month of November, giving you all the tea because we had some good ones and we had some not so good ones. I am also in a very different era. I'm in a fantasy era. <gasps> Hold for shock, I know. Who could believe it? Not me. So this is a very eclectic smattering of books. We have a lot of horror, a few thrillers, a lot of fantasy, and some romance as well. We're just all over the board, and I cannot wait to tell you about it. But before we get into the wrap-up, I do want to let you know about the sponsor of today's video, which is Solution In. If you are a student currently, I'm sure one of the biggest stressors is the cost of textbooks. I have been there. You feel like your tuition is totally taken care of and paid for, and then boom, you have to drop a bunch more money on books. It is absolutely crazy how those expenses can add up. The financial burden of education just doesn't feel fair sometimes. But Solution In is here to help, and I'm so excited that they reached out and wanted to partner so I could share this with you guys. They're offering a free free textbook subscription that's delivered right to your door. Free textbooks with free delivery. You just have to sign up for their service. And I'm super excited about this because obviously I feel very passionate about education. I worked my ass off in school and grad school and I remember how hard it was to be a student. Anything that I could do to make this easier and more accessible on you guys, I'm all for. Whether you're in high school, college, grad school, or you're just someone looking to expand your knowledge, Solution In has your back. So make sure to check out the link down below in the description and check out Solution In. I really hope this can help some of you guys who are students out there. And thank you so much to Solution In for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and get into the wrap up. As always, we're going to start with my stats. So as I said, I read a total of 17 books in the month of November, and that is a total of 5,086 pages. That is a higher number than usual because of the fantasy books that I read. I was reading some some quite long books. I did read them on audio so it was a little bit easier for me because y'all know I struggle with long books but yeah quite a few mini pages. Here is the mood breakdown. Pretty similar mood breakdown to what a usual month is for me. Dark, mysterious, tense, and emotional which I thought that was interesting that my genres were all over the place compared to previous months but the mood breakdown was still the same. Like I tend to go for the same mood even across different genres. A little over a third of the books that I read this month were fast paced and then two thirds were medium paced. I did read three books over 500 pages, go me, six books under 300 pages, and then eight books in between. I read all fiction books this month, no nonfiction, and here is my genre breakdown. It is all over the place. Horror, thriller, short stories, romance, mystery, fantasy, YA, contemporary, dystopian, LGBTQ, like Wow. And across my 17 book reviews, I had an average rating of 3.65, which is definitely like in the medium place. It's not like the highest average rating, but I feel like because I branched out, that totally makes sense. And I still felt like it was a really good reading month. I had one one star and one two star, but then we move right into three three stars, a 3.5 star, eight four star books, a 4.5 star, and two five star gems of the month. And this is the breakdown of how I read these pages throughout the month of November. This month was super, super busy for me, but throughout the middle of the month and during Thanksgiving break, I had some great time to read. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the book reviews. As always, we're gonna start with my lowest rated book and work our way up to my favorite book of the month. So the one star book that I read this month, I'm sure, you already know about if you watched my new release thriller vlog. That is unfortunately hashtag crime time by Geneva Rose. If you watch this vlog then you know I think I had to like rant about this book for like eight minutes of that vlog because I just could not believe how horrendous it was. There's really 
nothing redeeming about this book like i don't want to sit here and just rant about it and drag it again because i actually like i actively feel bad for not liking this book like i i wish that i could like it but it is just so so bad to me personally um no we are following the mystery of this home invasion this girl and her half brother are just hanging out in her apartment when they hear their neighbor's apartment being burgled and they go to check it out and they realize that their neighbor is involved in some kind of organized crime so they get pulled into this wild wacky world of organized crime and it's supposed to kind of be like reminiscent of finlay Don of it is killing it or some other type of humorous mystery but the humor in this book was just not hitting at all in the slightest it was so millennial cringe to me and it borderline problematic a couple times there were just a few weird moments that made me really uncomfortable specifically with like cultural representation uh, the audiobook was so grating to listen to. One of the voice actors literally made me want to bang my head against the window. Yeah, no, it, it was just a really, really rough reading experience. And even if it was that bad, if the plot, like, came together, I could have given this an average review, but... It was not just the personal things, like the plot actually didn't make sense, had so many holes, the pacing was all over the place, it wasn't good. I don't recommend it. And the two star book that I read this month was also in that new release thriller vlog, y'all. 2023 was not the year for thrillers. It it was not. Like, there were so many bad ones this year, and unfortunately, this was one of them to me personally. I know this one's very divisive. I feel like some people are giving this five stars, other people are giving it one and two. I definitely fell on the two star side of the spectrum. I just did not like this at all. Again, you can hear my full reasons why in the vlog, but to give you the quick TLDR, this book is about a group of women who go to this isolated snowy mansion to work on their books. And they're under the direction of this mysterious famous author. But what they don't know is that this isn't just a retreat to work on their writing. Okay, annoying ass truck outside. Okay, I've been waiting for like five minutes and that truck is still idling out there. So hopefully it's not too loud. But yeah, they're not just there to work on their books. It is actually a competition and there are previous relationships between a few of the contestants that mean that this competition could turn killer and people start ending up dead. And honestly, this book was just really boring up until the 50% mark. And then it took this weird, wild turn that did not really work out for me the characters didn't have any depth but it wasn't in like a fun mindless way because it felt like the book was trying to say something but wasn't really saying it well i liked the lgbtqia representation but unfortunately the plot and the structure of the story just didn't really work for me at all it had a couple tropes that i don't really like I don't really have anything against this book, but it's definitely a no for me. Next up, let's get into my three star books, starting out with Small Town Monsters by Diana Rodriguez Wallach. I loved this cute little YA horror book. We are following two 17, 18 year olds. They're like seniors in high school in a small town as they start to uncover the epidemic of possession around their little area and they live in like a coastal town it's very just like small town idyllic but with like a creepy isolated atmosphere it, it was so good that is the thing that stands out the most about this book is the atmosphere um, but we're following these two kids in this town and one of them thinks that their mother is possessed and then the other one her parents are like professional investigators and exorcism 
doers, exorcists. So it's very cool to see how they interact. The girl whose parents are exorcists is kind of like a loner, goth girl. People kind of make fun of her for having spooky parents, which I don't know why they would bully her for that because I would think that is so cool. And then the boy whose mother is possibly possessed is a popular kid who has bullied her in the past. So there's kind of that like tension there of now they need each other and they're having more and more interactions and realizing that they're not as different as they once thought. So we just follow their little small town antics and spooky adventures in the town. It was fun. It was cozy. The horror was interesting. It read really, really quickly. There's nothing like over the top that stood out about it to me, but it was a fun, enjoyable read. I do believe this is branded as YA, but I think adults could definitely enjoy this as well. The horror was kind of like mid. It was nothing like too over the top and crazy where it couldn't be considered YA, but it was definitely more than something like a Fear Street book. I also read a few of the Kindle Unlimited like creature feature series that came out where a bunch of popular horror authors wrote little short stories that are creature features. And I gave The Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix three stars. I was really anticipating something new from one of my very favorite authors. And Grady Hendrix definitely did not disappoint. I mean, was I expecting big things because he's one of my favorite authors? Yes, but also how much can you really expect from like a 60 page story? I don't know. I liked the concept about someone who is is haunted by that creepy idea of someone reaching their hand out from underneath the bed and snatching your ankles. So like you can't step off the bed at night and you have to like have your feet covered. You can't have like a leg out, which is like a very common, almost like nostalgic childhood fear. To bring that into adulthood and give it a sense of reality it was really awesome. And I loved the kind of unexpected bits that Grady Hendrix threw in there. There was just nothing really stand out or like of substance for me in this book. It was just a fun little creepy time. And I think that's exactly what it was meant to be. So I'm totally fine giving this a three star. I also read Big Bad by Chandler Baker and I really liked this one as well. It is very similar to the book Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. If you like that one, I would definitely recommend giving this story a read. It's about this cute little perfect suburban family, but the wife has something a little bit off with her and we start to suspect maybe she's a werewolf. And at the same time, there is someone knocking at the family's door that will not leave them alone and maybe he has something to do with the wife's transformation. Again, it's a short story so it doesn't have too much in there but what there was I really liked it. It was fun, entertaining, the horror was good, the commentary in this one was a lot better, actually pretty impressive for being developed in such a short little novella but forgettable. I don't think it's something that's really gonna stay with me. It was fun for the moment but yeah, three stars. My one 3.5 star book of the month was The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Oh my god! I was so happy to dive back into this world. When the movie was coming out for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I knew that I wanted to go see it and of course, I had to read the book first. I just have that thing about me where if a book has a movie adaption or a TV show adaption, I have to read the book first. Like I just have to have my reading experience first. I actually have an entire vlog of me reading A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes and doing the movie review and telling you the little pieces that are different between the book and the movie. Over on my Patreon, I did that for my Queen exclusive video this past month. And it's a Patreon only video, so it's never gonna be posted here. If you wanna watch that, you will have to be a part of my top tier on Patreon. And of course, my Patreon is always linked down below. So if you don't know about The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, this is the prequel book to the Hunger Games trilogy in which we're following President Snow. I'm not gonna call him Coriolan Coriolanus. Why? Why does his name end with anus? Why? I'm just going to be referring to him as Snow. Such a hot man should not have a name 
that includes the word anus. So if you know President Snow, he is like the big bad evil character in the Hunger Games trilogy, but we learn a lot more about his character and background in this book and kind of like the development that made him the monster that he was for Katniss. As we're following him be a mentor to Lucy Gray, the District 12 tribute in the 10th Hunger Games. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. It was fun being back in that world but some of the pacing and structuring of the story was a little bit off to me. Like, it felt like it came out of nowhere sometimes, and the ending felt super, super rushed. There were times when it dragged and times when I felt like I could barely keep up. Also, the Hunger Games, like the actual games, was not the majority of the story, and I felt like that's kind of what I was wanting, especially not having read from this world in a long time. So it was definitely better than average, and I really enjoyed the movie as well, but not a favorite of all time. Not even something that I would want to put in my like recommending on a regular basis four star category, especially for that ending. That ending, I'm sorry, it's a little heartbreaking and a little atrocious to me personally. And now let's get into the four stars. And y'all, this is where it gets so weird. I am not my usual Haley self. We're going to be talking about some fantasy. The first four star book I want to talk about is A Court of Mist and Fury. Okay, so when was it? Two or three years ago, I read Akatar for a like trying fantasy for the first time vlog. That vlog is vintage. If you were there for that era, wow, bless your heart. Um, <laughs> I liked Akatar, but it just it wasn't enough for me to want to keep reading the series. I think I gave it three stars. It was fine, but nothing earth shattering. I didn't really get the hype. And everyone was telling me, just wait, you have to read the second book and you'll be sold. And I was like, yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, y'all were correct. Um, Y'all were very, very right about that because once I got into Akamap, I was like, oh, I get it. I get the lore, I get the found family trope, I get it. Honestly, since I read the middle three books of the series back to back to back, uh, this kind of blends for me. Like the second and third book kind of blend together. It's hard to like separate what was what since I listened to the audio literally back to back to back. But A Court of Mist and Fury, we're just seeing Feyre kind of come into her own outside of um, her relationship with Tamlin. I'm not going to give any spoilers in these reviews, so don't worry about that. But Feyre is like a human girl who enters the Fey world in the first book of the Akatar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses. And in the second book, we're following how she's kind of adjusting and coming into her own in the Fey realm. She is also getting to know the person that she created a deal with in the first book who helped her get out of like a lot of sticky situations. And that's Resand. That's the High Lord of the Night Court or whatever. I love him. I, I'm a Resand. Okay, I'm sorry. I am a Reese Stan. I love him. And seeing their romance progress as well as just the story progress was so good. I loved Feyre's character development in this book. It was just so fun, so entertaining. I was feeling emotion, which I didn't feel in Akatar. It sucked me in. Four stars, amazing. I immediately moved on to A Court of Wings and Ruin, or Aka War, as people refer to it, like with the acronym. And I feel like that really does capture the third book is a lot about war and preparing for war. And like, you can just kind of sense this tension throughout the entire third book that like things are about to explode between the queens in the human realm and then the different lords of the different courts in the Fey realm. And we're also getting to know this like core friend group of Fey a little bit better and integrating Feyre's sisters into that group, which I really loved. And just like deepening the bonds and emotions that I had with these characters it was a feeling that I literally haven't felt since I was a kid reading Harry Potter. Like, that is what I was reminded of when I was reading A Court of Wings and Ruin because the bonds that I had with these characters. Ooh, not the bond. Not the bond. I love the bond. Let me send this down the bond. <laughs> I, I just love the bonds that I was creating with these characters. Like, I'm not a series reader, so to have that back was like a very 
childhood nostalgic feeling and I really love this one despite all of the like heavy war and politics content I thought that would really turn me off from the third book but I ended up giving that one four stars as well and moved swiftly along into A Court of Frost and Starlight and this one was just so cute it is like the holiday season in the Fey realm in the aftermath of the war we're rebuilding um physically rebuilding the town and rebuilding the emotional and physical damage that was done during the war and kind of repairing relationships it's a really good like setup for the next book in the series because it kind of like wraps up all the stuff that just like literally left us in ruin at the end of Wings and Ruin. And this one was just so heartwarming. It was definitely for the girls who like don't give a fuck about the politics and the war, which like low-key is me. It was a lot of relationships, friendships, meaning, Farah like figuring out her place after the war. And I just really liked it. I just really liked it, okay? And I gave it four stars. And I'm like firmly in the Akhtar lore. Um, not necessarily a Sarah J. Mass stan because she's a little bit of a problem. Of course, we can't have any fun without an author behaving badly. So who's fucking surprised? Just wanna let you know. I do love this series, but Sarah J. Mass, I'm not fangirling okay i like the lore i like the characters but we can also see flaws okay so that's kind of where i'm at i'm currently reading a uh, court of silver flames and i'm absolutely loving it like this is feeling like more than a four star like why am i gonna give a fantasy book five stars mm, leave me alone and we're gonna jump right back into my safe zone with some horror i also gave four stars to black sheep by rachel harrison if you missed my rachel harrison taste test vlog i will link it up above and down below. I absolutely love this book. It's a horror book about mm, religious trauma from the lens of like a culty family that has excommunicated the black sheep of the family and we're following her as she gets invited back into the fold for her cousin's wedding. But of course things quickly go off the rails and descend into horror since this is a horror book and I just love the way that Rachel Harrison writes. Like it's so digestible and relatable and it really feels like her characters are speaking directly to you. They're darkly funny and have just this beautiful commentary and representation folded into the words that does not feel forced. The only reason why I gave this a four star instead of going all the way to a five was because the plotting and a little bit of the pacing at the end wasn't as tight as I know that her books can be because I've given quite a few for other books five stars and we'll talk about one of those later later. I also gave four stars to The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins. This was also in my new release thriller vlog. It is a very, very, very new release. I believe it comes out in February 2024. Uh, this is an arc, so when it comes out, make sure to pick it up because it was so good. It is like Southern Gothic Knives Out Murder Mystery. So, so good with a dash of Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I I have not really loved a lot of Rachel Hawkins previous works but this one is the best that I've read from her. I read it in a day and I was just like compulsively reading it. Every time I put it down I wanted to pick it back up because I needed to know not only like what happened with the murder of it all but also I just needed to know the lore about this rich ass family. Basically we're following this couple. The guy was adopted into this rich southern family but he wants nothing to do with his family at all especially since he inherited his mother's fortune but now the family is fighting over it and his partner the other perspective that we're following is pressuring him to kind of go back and reconnect because she's also curious as to what this is all about which i totally understood her character throughout the course of the book because i was like listen if I was about to get married to Cameron and I realized like he had inherited hundreds of millions of dollars, but he was just like, fuck my family. I'm not going to do with this dirty money. I would be like, mm. okay, but let's pause and think about it for like one second. <laughs> 
so all the family is at odds they're all like horrible people but in the most delicious and compulsively readable way and we are fighting over and possibly killing over this inheritance but at the same time we're trying to figure out what happened to this matriarch who has died and left her fortune to her adoptive son because she has had a very lore filled life she is giving evelyn hugo like i have not read such an intriguing kind of like heiress character since evelyn hugo it gave me those same vibes i absolutely love this one couldn't guess the twists love the characters love the story love the feeling and atmosphere yeah it was great not a five star favorite but i highly recommend it and the final of the creature feature short stories that I read is also a four star. This is the one by Josh Mallerman called It Waits in the Woods. And this is following kind of this like, mm, I don't want to give away exactly what it is, but it's like this creature that calls to you in the woods and we're following people that are hearing it and are called to it and maybe it disappear because of it. In particular, we're following someone who is looking for their sister and suspecting that her sister might have been intercepted at some point by this creature in the woods. Of all of the three novellas that I read from this series, this was my favorite one. I listened to the audio and it was really, really creepy. The horror was the most effective out of the three. And I got through this one the quickest with the most like heart pumping feelings. So I gave it a four star rather than a three like the rest of them. Again, it's really hard to rate super short stories like this because how much can you really get done in such a short amount of time? But I think Josh Mallerman did a little bit more than the other two books that I read. Next up, we have a contemporary romance. Yeah, I don't know. That is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I had never read from Sarah Adams before, and I really enjoyed my first little uh, touch into her imagination with these two wonderful characters. We are following Annie and Will, and Annie is this like perfect, pure, virginal lady who is just a little like quirky and bumbling and can't seem to make a relationship work. And Will is this sexy, suave, bad boy, playboy who has a bunch of casual meaningless sex and he is going to be Annie's dating coach. He is also her sister-in-law's bodyguard because her sister-in-law is like a famous pop star. So if you like a bodyguard romance but you want it like a little bit updated, you will love this. I love the like grumpy sunshine dynamic and they kind of get off on the wrong foot like Annie's under the impression that Will hates her so I love that kind of like miscommunication not really enemies to lovers enemies to lovers yeah I know some people are annoyed by that but I kind of like it it was a cute romance there were a couple steamy scenes but the spice wasn't crazy it was kind of like fate to black most of the time especially because Annie is a virgin like obviously her virginity was very important to her so there were a lot of conversations around that but that kind of took away from the steaminess However, there was a lot of tension building and I did like the way that the story unfolded. The miscommunication, third act, whatever, I think was handled really well. I love the plot. Honestly, the reason why it's not like a five star favorite is because of Annie's character. I just didn't love her that much. I loved Will so much. His chapters were what kept me reading, but Annie, I don't know. She's just not really a gal that I would be too close of besties with. Like she was just very, her inner monologue, didn't really click with me and I'm a self-insert type of girly when I read romance so not being able to see myself in Annie did take away from my enjoyment a little bit but still very enjoyable four stars recommend it if you like contemporary romance and my last four star book of November that I want to let y'all know about is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead I absolutely love Ashley Winstead her two previous thrillers have been my top favorite books of the year the past two years Midnight is the Darkest Hour was definitely different from her two previous releases, but I still really enjoyed it. We are following Ruth, who is a preacher's daughter in this small Southern Baptist town in Louisiana. 
It's giving very fire and brimstone, scary, religious trauma, and bodies are coming up in Bottom Springs, their little swampy town, and Ruth is embroiled in this murder mystery plot, but at the same time, she's also trying to find out who she is because the town and her family trauma and religious trauma has kind of robbed her of her identity. So we're trying to figure out who Ruth is at the same time that we're trying to figure out who this murderer terrorizing Bottom Springs is. This is definitely less thriller and more just like character driven story that dives into how religious trauma can deeply affect someone, especially a young woman. I loved the pieces of commentary and character development. Uh, the plot though is where I did struggle a little bit. The pacing was kind of weird. It's a little bit slower, but I did love the atmosphere that kept me invested in the book and kept me picking it up because I wanted to return to that swampy, kind of like fantastical atmosphere. It is so weird and, and such like a microcosm that it doesn't really feel like earth set in the present day like i don't know ashley winston has a really great way of writing a real life story that is so stripped bare and so real that it feels almost like a fantastical world if that makes sense i absolutely love her writing style in that way and i love her word choice her writing just flows so beautifully it was beautiful it was atmospheric the character development was there if you are a traditionally plot driven thriller type of girl. I don't know if this will hit for you, but if you're liking all of the things that I'm describing, highly recommend Midnight is the Darkest Hour. Just be prepared for a controversial ending. I have a theory about it, which we're definitely going to talk about in my Patreon live show. Also, my Patreon live show is going to be with Ashley Winstead on Wednesday at December 6th. So if you want to come to that and discuss with us, definitely join my Patreon down below. But yeah, I, I have a theory about that controversial ending that I will be asking Ashley Winstead about in our discussion. And I cannot wait for that. I did have one 4.5 star book this month and that is Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent and this is one that I read in my new release thriller vlog as well. This was definitely the standout from that vlog. I absolutely loved it. I love following neurodivergent characters and this one also has a great mental health rep, great trauma rep. It was just absolutely beautifully written. We are in the mind of Strange Sally Diamond. I, I don't want to call her strange. I want to call her sweet sweet Sally Diamond because she has been through a lot in her life and on top of all of that she's dealing with the death of her father which she has a very atypical reaction to that is a little concerning if you're not understanding her motives for dealing with it in that way. And because of her odd reaction, a series of events that transpire that lead to her finding out a little bit more about her background, her family, where she comes from. And it is just a horrifying story that is at the same time very charming and darkly funny, but it has some really dark content in here. This is just like the type of thriller that I like. If y'all know of any other thrillers like this, please, please, please recommend them to me. The only other one that I could like compare this to is The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth. And that is one of my favorite thrillers that I read this year. Strange Sally Diamond has a similar lead main character and similar themes of like family trauma. If you want my full in-depth like 15 minute review, you can definitely go watch my new release thriller vlog, but just know that I do highly recommend it. The only reason that I took off that 0.5 star and couldn't call it a favorite of all time five star read was because the ending was a little bit abrupt and I did learn that that was because of the difference between the U.S. and the U.K. edition. They did cut out some of the content for the U.S. edition and I'm really dying to get my hands on a U.K. copy. Actually someone sent me one uh an EPUB of it so thank you for that. I need to look into it and read the ending to see how different it is because if it's different this could definitely be a five star. But on to my last top two books of the month that were standout 
easy five stars. We have two by Rachel Harrison, who is, I am very proud to call, my new favorite author. I also had the absolute pleasure of meeting her this past month in November, and she is just a sweet, wonderful, well-spoken, intelligent gem in person, as well as on paper. My first five-star book that I want to talk about is Such Sharp Teeth. This book will live with me forever. Bury me with this book. If you want to know me deeply, read this book. <laughs> like, that is all I have to say. We are following our main character who is back in her small hometown from the city to help her sister through her pregnancy. And while she's there, she's undergoing a transformation where she is, she fears, turning into a werewolf. At the same time, she's going through a mental transformation and there's a ton of trauma rep in here. Huge, huge, huge trigger warnings for sexual assault. But if you're a woman, who is looking for kind of like a cathartic reading experience about that kind of content, you will love this. It will hit for you. The metaphor, the commentary, the character development, the way that the story unfolds, all of it was perfect and flawless and I have no notes. This is just one of my favorite horror books that I've read to date period, the end. And my top book of the month was actually a short story collection by Rachel Harrison, and that is Bad Dolls. This is a little four short story collection that every story just hit so hard for me. If you want to hear about each individual story, you can watch my taste test vlog. I go really in depth, but if you're just looking for a recommendation, I mean, I cannot recommend this highly enough. They are little pockets of horror with like real psychological feminist kind of things that are real life horror, but it's in the context of like this other type of horror that's more kitschy and fantastical and easy to get into if you like horror content, but also like hits you really hard emotionally. And the commentary is wonderful. And I literally was sobbing reading this book. I was simultaneously horrified, laughing, and sobbing while reading this collection. Like it made me feel the entire gamut of like every emotion I possibly could. It made me think, it made me zone out and stare at the wall and rethink about my life. Like, and it's well written and the horror is good. Like what more could you possibly want? This is my favorite short story collection of all time, period. And with that, those are all of the 17 books that I read this past month in November. I hope you guys got some good recommendations from this wrap up. Don't forget to check out Solution In down below. I will have them linked and thank you so much again to them for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.